We're now joined by Austin P. Wide Receivers Coach and Passing Game Coordinator, former Baylor Wide Receiver Lanier Sampson, Sikkim 365 Radio and 365 Sports. You're moving up that coaching ladder, young man. <laughs> yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's been, uh, it's been definitely a blessing, to say the least. When did coaching get in your blood? Was it even uh, early in your career? Was it while you were at Baylor? When, when did that kind of hit? Well, to be honest, I didn't want to coach one. After I got done playing football, I wanted to be done with football completely. Um, but uh, Coach Babers, me and Coach Babers stayed in contact throughout my uh, uh, NFL and CFL career. And he always told me when I was uh, a player at Baylor, whenever you want to get into coaching, let me know. And so uh, I decided I wanted to get my uh, – something I wanted to do was get my master's. And uh, he was heading to Syracuse, and I let him know uh, in 2015, end of 2015, that I wanted to get into coaching. And so uh, he stayed true to his word, brought me up as a graduate assistant at Syracuse in January of 2016. And, uh, and from then on, I just got around coaches and uh, kind of changed my perspective on how I felt at one point in time. I got a chance to get my master's from Syracuse in education. And uh, like I said, it just I got around these young men and being able to mentor young men each and every day uh, is something that I, uh, that, I, that I love to do. So uh, being around them and being around football again just from the coaching standpoint was uh, refreshing for me. And then from then on, it just kind of took off for me, and I, I enjoy it to this day. Well, Austin P. obviously an opportunity for you, and not just wide receivers coaching, that's a role but also passing game coordinator. Is that a pretty quick jump for you? Uh, it is. It is. But being a receiver, uh, being a receiver all my life and understanding the game of football um, and then having just my experience and, and the background I've had being around some great coaches as well kind of prepared me for, for this moment. RG3, I sent him a text last night. I said, tell me about Lanier Sampson from your perspective. He said he was overlooked because of Kendall, T-Dub, and, and Josh, and T-Reese, but he was my guy. And if given the chance, would have been the most prolific wide receivers in college. I love that guy. That's from our G3. What does that mean? It means a lot for me, uh, especially with the talent that we had on the team. And, yeah, I was very overlooked. When we had, But we had a lot of talent. And so, I mean, it's only one ball on the football field, and I just appreciate the time I was there being able to make the plays that I – was able to make for us to be in the situation, the position we were in uh, at that time, especially, I guess it was our junior year in 2011, the year he won the Heisman. And so uh, it means a lot coming from a guy like him. And uh, like I said, I don't discredit anything from, you know, all the other receivers we had because they were they were great receivers. And so it was just, uh, it, was, it was loaded. And then we had some young guys as well in that room that kind of had to wait their turn. So uh, it, was a, it was a loaded group, but I wouldn't want it any other way. He also told me your nickname was Longfoot. <laughs> well, uh, look, uh, he he maybe called me uh, Longfoot, but uh, my it was it was really Lenny Longchain from from came Coach Brown. But uh, you know, I had a few nicknames, so uh, it, it was a little bit of everything. But uh, I, I did have the fastest forty up until, oh man, T. Reed got me one year. Oh, bet yeah. Yeah, he got me one year, and uh, after that, I was not. I did not have the fastest forty because T. Reese ran. I don't know something really fast, and it was it was faster than what I what I had. But uh, no, no, I, I appreciate the compliment. But uh, I, I got surpassed by by Tevin Reese. You mentioned that you wanted to do something else after football, but but is it really just going to always be in your blood? I think so. I, I've been playing this game since the age of six. And no matter, you know, how many different ways I I may try to not, you know, coach or anything like that, it, I think it's just it's just in me. I mean, being a, basically a player's coach at Baylor a lot of the times and, and helping guys out, I was fortunate enough to be a four-year starter. So um, we had some young guys that came up after me that, you know, instead of Coach Babers having to do the coaching, you know, I was doing a lot of the coaching. And, uh, and so I think it just kind of was instilled in me you know, at a young age, and just kind of just stuck with, stuck with me. So you're juggling right now because you were at Austin P earlier this week. Now you're back at Syracuse. They've got a visit weekend, and then you have to get yourself back to move back to Tennessee. Is it is it is it like a whirlwind, like a blur right now? Oh yeah, it definitely happens fast. I mean, it happens tremendously fast, and in this coaching profession, that's how it happens. And so, uh, yeah, it's it's been a whirlwind trying to. Uh, 
get done what I need to get done here at Syracuse to wrap up and then, you know, and then go to Austin P and uh and do what I can to help our team, you know, win ball games. And uh I think Austin P is a is a is a great place man. They have some great people, great coaching staff, I mean great players and uh I'm excited. Lanier, you mentioned how Dino Coach Babers mentioned coaching to you when you were actually still playing. And now you're moving on. And this is an opportunity. This is a promotion for you. This isn't like anything lateral. This is a better opportunity. But how hard was it to tell Coach Babers you needed to go? Uh, it, it wasn't hard. Uh, we have a great understanding uh, of what this profession uh, comes with. And at the end of the day, uh, like you said, it was, it was a promotion for me. And he understands the game. And, you know, we've been around each other for um, going on four, almost four years now. And so he, he just, uh, like I said, he understands the profession. He's been in it for 30 plus years and he knows that, you know, when a promotion like this comes, I can't, you know, pass on the opportunity, especially with, uh, with the coaching staff I'm working with, with Coach Scotty Walden at, uh, Austin P. It's a great opportunity to, to pass on. And, uh, and so it's been, uh, it, it wasn't as tough as you may think. What was it like to be the one on those teams in 10, 11, and 12 that, that took the next step? Uh, it meant a lot. I mean, we went through a lot during that time. I mean, the first year I was there in 2008, we went 4-8. and eight. I registered that year. The next year, Robert tore his ACL. Nick Florence came in and did a tremendous job that year as, as a freshman. And uh, we, we just didn't win enough games. We went 4-8 again before that 2010 season. We went 7-6. and six. And then the Heisman uh, 2011 year from Griff, uh, we went 10-3 and three that year. And I think uh, – it, it, it really, it really did something to me. Uh, we, we fought through it. We battled through it as a, as a team, as a coach, as you know, as Coach Brown's coaching staff, and it meant a lot because we didn't, we, you know, we didn't walk in anything. We had to earn everything, you know, we worked for, and a lot of that had to do with uh, uh, the way we persevered, the way uh, Coach Kyes. I mean, he had a big part in that as well, and and the, the his coach and his uh, strength staff, and like I said, Coach Brown and his staff, man just a, a combination of guys that wanted to, to do well and be great and we end up you know doing a good job turning the program around you know you had some great moments is there one in particular or is there a moment a game I, I mentioned the TCU game when I mentioned you got the job at Austin P you had a long touchdown and that was that one where you guys had to come back after blowing them out at halftime or third <laughs> quarter and store kick kicked a long field goal to win the game and it really yeah. was a monster game if you think about with that team going 10 and three was there any particular moment that you remember the most that was kind of like if you could choose just just one? Um, I think the TCU probably was the favorite. Now, the Oklahoma game that, that year was also uh, uh, close, oh, yeah. uh, uh, you know, could have been 1A, 1B type of uh, situation, but I think the TCU game really meant a lot to our team because the year before when we went down to TCU, I think we ended up getting blown out like 45 to 10 at TCU. So it was, a, it was an embarrassing moment uh, that 2010 year. So that 2011 year, we were you know, we were ready for that game, and obviously it was the first game of the season. And, uh, you know, it, it just – it was a close game. I mean, we got out, you know, quick on them, up 20-something points, and then we let them come back, and it ended up being a game, and Aaron kicked the game with a field goal. But I think that game right there, you know, kind of set the tone for that year because, like I said, we went we went down there and lost 45-10. to 10 mm-hmm. the year before, And it wasn't – it was it left a bad taste in our mouth and just the way that, you know, obviously I think you remember the whole – incident in the crowd oh yeah uh, way to go oh, big that. 12 way to go big 12 yep. yeah exactly so that next year you know, we we were we wanted that game and, and we played like it and what? even though i only had one catch for 67 yards uh and, and a touchdown but it, well, you know you know me I'm, I'm very unselfish and whatever helps the team win that's who i am i'm always ready for my i was always ready for my opportunities and, and that was a big opportunity right after the halftime being able to to put uh, points up for our team. You've mentioned a lot of those in your career. Dino, Coach Browse, among others. What's the the intangibles that's going to make you special? I think just I'm personal. I'm very personal. And in this game, uh, especially with everything going on, I mean, now you have transfer portals and things like that. Just me being able to reach these young men on a different level. I, I care about these young men more than just what they can do on the football field. And at the end of the day, I want them to become better fathers, better, uh, better husbands when that time comes, and it's just better people overall. And that that really means a lot to me. And I think that 
sometimes as coaches we forget about that part of things. Like they're still people. You know, they go out on the field and they perform, and they do well. But at the end of the day, they're people, and they like their personal relationship. They like the, them being able to come to you know come to you and, and talk about things that's outside of football that's going on in their life that they may need you know help with. And I think just me being in tune with what's going on in their life helps me be, become a better coach because um, you know they're they're willing to go out and uh, and battle for you, especially when you know when they know you care about. Them. And so I always say this, like I said, especially with the transfer portal guys can jump in the transfer portal if they don't like a coach this that, and the other. But my whole motto is uh uh you know love uh coach hard right and love harder and that's kind of my deal because once they know you care for them and love them and things like that uh they'll do whatever for you and once they know you understand their background everybody comes from a different background so uh everybody's not the same and it may be at times they're going on something going on in their life that you know about so at practice that day you may you may you know know, lay off of them a little bit you just got to really be in tune with your with your players and i think that has helped me uh, become a, a better coach, you know, overall. Do you also think, Lanier, that with Coach Browse is not in coaching, and, and, and we know that, but he still has so many former staff members like Levy and Kendall and Phil Bennett and Randy Clements and Jim Gush and Dino Babers, those who coached underneath of him, and now players, former players getting involved in coaching like yourself. Does that help continue that tree, that lineage that, that, that was such a, a good run? Oh, for sure. I don't. I don't think nobody. I don't think anyone around the country forgets where it all came from. Um, I, I think we. Everybody always talk about the Baylor system. The Baylor system. They just continue to spread around the country. But everybody knows, you know, where it started. And so, and Browns was the, uh, you know, the head of all of it. And so, I don't think no any nobody ever forgets that. And I think he just it just continues to grow. And I think he did a good job, you know. And so, you know, we just kind of you know, fruits of his labor at the end of the day. Lanier, congratulations, man. You're you're moving up. Appreciate your time. Good luck with Austin P. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. Hey, it's great talking to you. Lanier Sampson, Austin P, passing game coordinator, wide receivers coach, former Baylor wide receiver on Sikkim 365 Radio. Alan Samuels is having the Make the Switch sales event in June on the award-winning